Good morning, angry fans. How are you? What a day. Oh. Why, why are you making a video on a Friday morning? I know that's what you're thinking when you're not driving to work. Well, you don't know I'm not driving to work. In fact, I'm driving back from Sainsbury's. That's where I've been. Oh, no. They've shut the road. They've shut the road. Okay. Someone's had an accident, haven't they? This is, I was going to tell you about this road. I was going to, oh, no, where the hell am I supposed to go now? Ah, oh, literally no way home. I've literally got no way to go home. Unbelievable. That road, very, very open, very exposed. About an hour ago, we had an episode of uh, freezing rain. And it's turned it into an ice rink. And uh, I was driving up it. And I was skidding a bit. And by skidding, I mean it was a gentle curve, and, and I could feel the car drifting out. You know, like fast and the, fast and the furious, angry. The fast, the furious, and the angry it was. Anyway, I could feel it drifting out, and uh, and then what happens is I come up behind this car and it stopped in the fast lane. Stopped in the fast lane. So I put the hazards on and braked and pulled in behind it because this car had to move. It was, there was going to be a multiple pile up if this car didn't move. So as I uh, pulled up behind it, it reminded me of a film where uh, an aircraft was on final approach and then coming in behind it was, was a, a 747 and 747s can't fly slowly. The, most, the slowest that they can fly is about 143 knots. Whereas the fastest a uh, light aircraft can fly is 120 knots. So there's no way that uh, a Boeing is not going to smash into a light aircraft. If the light aircraft is in front of the Boeing, that's the accident waiting to happen. Anyway, uh, right, I'm going to have to get old Google to get me out of this. Hang on, I'll be right back. No, I won't. I'll tell you now. I know where I am. I've only got to get home, haven't I, for Christ's sake? So, uh, let's have a look, where can we go? Not Ramsgate. We're going to Ramsgate? Yeah, so uh, anyway, there's this car uh, stuck in the slow lane. Oh, I'll have to tell you later. Right, I'm back. Well, that was... <laughs> Oh dear, that, that was that, that road that turned into a skating ring, they've just closed it. I can't blame them. It must be literally it must be good for skating on by now because of this freezing rain. Well, you can't see the windows here, but the, the actual car itself looks like it's covered with anaglypta because it's all bobbly because of the rain that's frozen on it and all the windows uh, on the left hand side are all anaglyptered up because uh, the um, freezing rain was coming in on the left hand side in the Sainsbury's car park and the uh, all of my parking sensors are flashing at me because they're all iced up and the stupid thing is there's no point de-icing them because um, within five seconds they'll just be iced up again so I'm driving along in a block of ice you can probably hear the windscreen wipers clanking away because they're iced up I'm just pleased I'm driving a car and not a plane so a plane in these sort of conditions wouldn't fly at all. Well, it would fly like a block of ice. So anyway, some poor unfortunate has um, turned their car over probably. It's not, the dri this driving is not for the inexperienced, these, these sort of conditions. And yet people still have faith, don't they, in their cars and they just jump in and think that they're sitting on the sofa at home, they're nice and warm and then all of a sudden they're upside down in a ditch. So anyway, uh, I uh, managed to get this girl to get off the uh, out of the fast lane, but she was frightened, obviously, because her car was skidding about, and nobody likes their car skidding about. So uh, anyway, she uh, she got got her, and then uh, now 
I mean, I think the theme of this is resiliency, isn't it? How resilient are you? You know? Why am I up Sainsbury's? Well, I'm up Sainsbury's because the surgery's shut. Why is it shut? I've shut it. You know, I've shut it because I don't need to keep it open. I can shut it. We've got the patients to understand, they can all be rebooked. They would rather not come in. I don't want to get into arguments about who fault it, whose fault it is that they haven't come in and whether they should pay it or not for wasting my time, blah, blah, blah. There is, uh, I was having a chat this morning because, um, you know, it's a, there's a perennial debate um, about who should bear the cost if the patient cancels at short notice. And I'm firmly of the belief that um, the patient should uh, bear the cost at short notice. I mean, and that, now why is that? And it boils down to something called opportunity cost. If a patient cancels, then, uh, and you can't refill the appointment, then you've lost the opportunity to make some money in that slot, and that's called opportunity cost. Now, um, supposing someone's being paid on a block grant. So, for example, if someone, supposing someone doesn't go to the doctor, it wastes the doctor's time. However, I've never seen a doctor that really was sitting around doing nothing, so. I mean, how much of the doctor's time does it actually waste? I mean, does it or does it merely mean that the doctor's in with a slight chance of running on time? Uh, and the penalty, you know, the people who pay the penalty for someone fa failing to turn up is the other patients because they are day in, day out, routinely inconvenienced by the doctor running late. Now, why does the doctor run late? Because occasionally a patient doesn't turn up and they don't want to be wasting their time, they don't want any opportunity cost, so what they do is they run with a buffer of patients, and so they never, they never slack. So, you know, how much, so when, when a patient doesn't turn up to a doctor, the doctor's actually not that unhappy, you know? There's no opportunity cost. It's the patients who, are, who suffer when, when other patients don't turn up. And in a way that's, you know, you could argue that's how it should be. I don't see, I never don't turn up, so I don't see why I should suffer the consequences of other people that do. But um, that's the way it works in the doctors, in the dentists, you know, but, but then the patients don't pay the doctors, do they? Not directly anyway. But with us, the patients pay us directly, therefore there is an opportunity cost. We miss out on what they would have paid us if, they, if, if they'd come in. Now, the reason why the doctors don't worry too much is because their patients are paid by means of a block grant. So, I'll turn that off because all it's doing is just wiping ice up and down the windscreen. So if you're paid by means of a block grant and nobody comes in, unless it affects the block grant, then... Caution, A299 road yeah. closed. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, I've just seen the police, mate. So if you're paid by means of a block grant and it's unaffected by whether the patients turn up or not, then you don't care if they don't turn up, right? If you're paid by means of a block grant and it does and it does matter, like on the NHS where you're paid UDAs and you don't you can't get a UDA done, so that affects it's going to affect your block grant in the future, isn't it? So it does affect you if a patient doesn't turn up, and privately, obviously, it affects you because you're. Um, you're missing out on some money. But having said that, and I learned this from, you know, January, sort of taught me this lesson again. If you can rebook those patients, you'll make that money anyway. And if it's in time that it wouldn't have been occupied, then in fact, there's no opportunity cost. I mean, if you're booked up three months ahead and you have to, oh, you're kidding me. Don't tell me they've shut every job carriageway in the county. Oh my God. Unbelievable. How is, how is everyone supposed to get home? Why don't you just shut the largest roads and just force everyone to go down the icy small ones? Hey, hey, that's a good idea, isn't it? Where was I? Yeah, so opportunity cost. Oh, I'm going to get stuck in a traffic jam now. Unbelievable. There's this tiny, tiny, tiny little hamlet called Minster and they're taking all the traffic off the dual carriageway and sending it into Minster. Fortunately I've been to Sainsbury's so I could survive for about three months in the car I think I'll probably be all right so I will be okay and I've got enough petrol so 
because I know what it's like that way. There's a there's a problem that way with people parking on the on the road, and so it's like everyone's trying to slip through one car at a time. Caution: A299 road closed. And if you've got a a queue of traffic both ways, then they get into a thing called a deadly embrace where neither one can proceed. Right, yes, yes, it's closed, it's closed. Come on. Yeah, so deadly embrace, blah, blah, blah. Opportunity cost, right? So, the doctor's got no opportunity cost because the block grant road head closed. Oh, shut up. Right, finally, finally, I found a way back. It involved driving across a field, but I'm back on the straight and narrow home. So where were we? Yeah, opportunity costs. So block grants. Uh, yeah, everything's off on this car. So my brake assisted support, radar brake assisted, this has gone off, everything's gone off. Everything's flashing. So if you're a, you've got a dental contract, then inactivity does, uh, uh, I mean, you could argue that doctor's inactivity but I mean, it's not as direct as a dentist in activity, is it? I mean, if a dentist doesn't do a UDA, then he's short of UDAs. Talking of which, we're coming into March now, 1st of March yesterday, so this is a uh, gum shield season, isn't it? In the profession, this is where everyone who's not done enough UDAs starts treating their staff and uh, everyone's getting gum shields. Oh yes, uh, yes, you need a gum shield. Why do I need a gum shield? Well, because uh, my UDA's total is judged on the 31st of March, how many I've done, and I'm a bit short, so uh, and I get a UDA for a gum shield. So that's the clinical necessity for you needing the gum shield, my boy. <sighs> privately, your, you know, what's the opportunity cost privately? Okay, that's an interesting question. If you're booked up, then the opportunity cost rises, doesn't it? Because you are going to have to give that patient another appointment which you could have filled. However, let's just say the other end of the spectrum that you can give them another appointment which you probably wouldn't have filled. So in that case, there's no opportunity cost, is there? So why not just say to the patients, look, you know, if you can't get in, just let me know, just reschedule. Well, I suppose if you were very, very blank, then you could, couldn't you? You could just say, just don't come back on another time when I've, I'm going to be in and all my fixed costs are going to be clocking up. Your costs are not all fixed, don't forget. I mean, things like rent and uh, mortgage loans and things like that, the fixed things go out whether you're working or not. The staff, probably the biggest cost, which is variable. So you could argue that there's always some variable cost, uh, opportunity cost, because um, you know, you've paid for a nurse to stand around doing nothing and you'll need to pay for her again to stand around when to do something, when something needs to be done. That was a funny thing, I think that was an owl. So, um, yeah, but at the moment, I mean, in the thick of winter, for us, there's not a massive opportunity cost. And so what I've done this morning, I've cancelled all the patients. And, uh, well, as I say, all the, in the private practice, all the patients is not usually very many. Um, and then they've got, you know, the reassurance that there's no point in them turning up because... Uh, now, I'm not saying that they might not turn up because... Um, I've emailed them and SMSed them and so, uh, you know, if they don't check their emails or their SMSs, then they might not... Then they might turn up, but there are only two that I've not managed to contact. And, uh, you know, that's... The, again, you know, if a patient gives you... If you ask a patient what their contact numbers are or their contact details and they give you these contact details and then you find out when you do need to contact them that they're no use then I wouldn't say that again that you don't have much culpability there's no much responsibility for you in that event 
you know, you're, they gave you the details saying, look, if you need to contact me, they get in touch with me on this number. And then if you ring that number and it goes straight to answer phone or it's, uh, no, it's a dead number or it just rings and nobody picks up, then, you know, really, you've, you've, I would say probably providing you've done two, two channels. So email and SMS, I would say it was fine. Uh, answer phone message followed up with an email I'd say you're fine you're covered uh, answer phone message on its own uh, you know uh, um, just uh, leaving a message on somebody's mobile on its own a text on its own probably not you know it could have made a bigger effort I'd have thought and you know so the patient might have a pop at you but if you've done two I don't think they, they've got any right to have a pop at you so um, yeah so the resilience let's just recap then so for resilience uh, not resilience for for uh, opportunity cost doctors not a lot uh, NHS dentists uh, more than doctors um, and private private dentist probably somewhere in the middle between not a lot of doctors and and yeah it does matter dentists because they've lost a UDA um, if you're this is where resilience comes in I mean in circumstances like this you know when you've got severe um, you've got severe circumstances affecting your your ability to work or live or earn a living or whatever um, how much spare have you got? How much fat have you got to fall back on? Oh, there we go. Oh well, it's going to be recorded in four parts, isn't it? That was a patient just saying that she needs to cancel all her direct debits because she's on the red line. So that's fine. I've told her she can still come in if she has a problem. This is it. You see, resiliency. You can say yes. I don't mind. We'll treat you free for a few months. If you're that desperate, I don't mind. I'll do it. If you've got a, um, if you've got to uh, shut the practice for a few days and let your staff stay at home rather than stuff their cars into the loader tree, you know, trying to get to work because they're so desperate, then fine. Be a bit resilient, you know. Have a bit of fat there. God knows I have. Have a bit of fat there for when things aren't going so well. Right. Okay. I hope that's been helpful. I'm sure it hasn't. I'll. Uh, Stay warm and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.